Hey what's up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So I've gotten quite a few comments recently from people asking me to actually make a tutorial on how to export games in Godot. And I was honestly surprised because I didn't think that I'd pr need to make a tutorial on how to export a game in Godot. But if that's something which you guys think will be useful and you're someone who struggles with exporting a game in Godot, I've decided to make this tutorial today to help you guys out. So if you do enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and let's get right into it. So let's say, for example, that you've finished making a build of your game and you want to export it. Well, here's what we're going to do. So here where it says project up in the top left, you just want to click here, then go to export. And now that will bring up this export menu here. So the first thing which you should do is you should click onto where it says add here. And then this is where you can add your export template. So the export template depends on the platform that you are exporting the game for. So since I use Windows and I export my games for Windows, I am going to be selecting the Windows Desktop export template. And there we go. So before you do add your export template, you'll probably be asked to download whatever export template you are trying to add. So do keep that in mind, uh, because I already have the Windows template downloaded, I can just simply add it just like I did just then, but you guys may have another menu actually pop up telling you to download the Windows export template, so do keep that in mind. So we're not going to be going over all of these options today, I'm only going to be going over the ones which I change up whenever I'm exporting my game. Games. This is just to keep things simpler for you guys. So the first thing obviously is the export path. So the export path determines where your game is going to be exported. So if we were to click on this icon here, now what we can do is we can actually go select a path where we want to export our game. So for me, I have a particular folder here um, called the Built Games in my Godot Projects folder, which I use to export my games into. So this is the folder where I'm going to be exporting, uh, you know, this game here that we're exporting into. So I'm going to go create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it Rusifix, since that's the name of my project. And by the way, in case you're wondering what this project is that I've currently got open here, it's just like a Godot animation that I've been making, so it's not an actual game, but I am going to be using it as an example for this tutorial today. So yeah, um, now that I've got a new folder, we can now enter in the file name here, so I'm just going to enter in, you know, example export as the file name. You can just, you know, enter in your game name here if you want to. Then we go save, and boom, so now we have the export path set up. Alright, so the next option we're going to be talking about here is the export console wrapper option. So when you do hover over the text here, it actually explains what it does. So if true, a console wrapper executable is exported alongside the main executable, which allows running the project with enabled console output. Now, a console is definitely good for things like debugging. If you're just, like, making a final build of your game, you don't really need to export a console along with it. However, if you are debugging your game and it's still in development, then you can export a console if you want to, so then you can actually open your game up via that console executable, and then as you're playing your game, you can see if there's any errors showing up in the CMD prompt. It is pretty good to use. So there are a few options here. So we have no, debug only, and debug and release. So what these options mean here is the following. So if you select no, that obviously means that no console wrapper is going to be exported at all alongside your main executable. Then we have debug only. So this means that console will only be exported if your game is in debug mode. And then we have debug and release, so this basically means that the console will be exported out with the main executable, whether it's a debug or release build, so it doesn't matter. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to have, uh, you know, I'll just have debug and release selected. Again though, usually when I'm exporting final builds of my games, I usually have this set to no. But you guys can do what you want, of course. So then underneath the binary format option, we have embed PCK. So if true, project resources are embedded into the executable. So whenever we export games in Godot, if you've played any of my ga Godot games before, you've most likely noticed that there's two files in the game folder. There is an .exe file and then a .pck file. So .pck is short for package. It's basically a lot of the content which is being used for your game. But if you don't want to have two separate files and you just want to have 
everything be in the executable, you can do that by doing embed PCK. So this basically means that the package file that gets exported along the ex alongside the executable will no longer exist. It will now be embedded into the executable itself. So if you do want to select this option, you can. I usually just have it off, but again, you can select it if you want to. There's no harm in it, I'm pretty sure. All right, so the next option we're going to be talking about here is the architecture. So that architecture determines what CPUs can actually play your game. So if you were to select x86-64, this would mean that your game is going to be made for 64-bit CPUs. x86-32 means 32-bit means CPUs. And then ARM64, this is for like, you know, Macs and stuff like that, which use ARM-based CPUs. So the architecture here will basically determine, you know, what CPUs will be able to run your game. If you only have a 32-bit computer, for example, and you try exporting for 64-bit, the game may not run well on your system, or it may not run at all. Um, I'm pretty sure that 32-bit games can run on any system, and uh, ARM64, of course, they can only run on, you know, ARM64-based processors. So yeah, uh, again, the architecture here just determines the, uh, the processors that your game will be able to run on. By default, it's set to x86-64, and this is usually what I just have it set to. But if you guys find yourselves needing to change the option, you can if you want. But by default, I just usually leave it as this. So then the texture format stuff, I don't worry about any of this here. Nor do I worry about this co-design thing here. But then underneath the application settings, we have the following. So as you can see here, under the application setting, we have modify resources checked as true. However, if we disable this, um, all the options that are below modify resources are gone because this modify resources check here basically determines if we can change all this information to do with our executable here. So first up, we have our icon. So this basically determines the icon of our game's executable. So by default, this is just going to be the Godot logo itself. However, if you have your own uh, image which you would like to use as a logo, for example, I'm just going to use this random uh, blood texture that I have here as an icon. So now my executable for my game is going to have this icon set here. So then the console wrapper icon, this basically determines the icon of what the console wrapper is going to be. So for this example, I might just select this, uh, this bullet hole image. So then we have the file version. So this determines the version of your game. So usually for most of my games, when I'm doing a full release, usually what I'll do is 1.0.0.0. So yeah, you have to do uh, fr you have to do four lots of uh, of numbers whenever you're doing the file version. Now the product version, I usually just do the exact same as the file version, and then company name. So this is you know your name. So for me, for example, I'm just going to enter in Lachlan Shelton since that's how I go by with all my games, and then you can enter in your game name. For this, I'm just going to be calling it Rusifix since that's what this project is called here. And then you can add a description if you want to. I usually don't add a description, but again, again you can if you want to. Uh, if you have any copyright on your game that you would like people to see, you can add that in, or trademarks as well. And uh, yeah, so that there is overall the main stuff to do with exporting your game in Godot. Those are all the main options there. Alrighty, so now that we're done discussing all the options here on the uh, the option side of the uh, the export menu, let's now talk about some of the other things. So if we switch over to where it says resources here, so as you can see here, we have export mode, export all resources in the project. So basically, depending on the option that you choose here, so if you were to select export all resources in the project, that means that every single file that you have in your project will be exported in the executable or in the PCK file. If you were to select export selected scenes and dependencies, that basically means that whatever uh, you select here in this uh, in this menu here, that's what will be exported in your project. So if I was to select uh, this Rusifix models folder here, as you can see, it now selects uh, all the things that are in this folder so then all these things can be added into the uh, the project when it's exported. So if there's any files that you specifically do not want to export, then you can just, you know, simply, uh, you know, enable or disable what you do want to export. Then we have a uh, select exported resources. So this is pretty much the exact same thing as a uh, export selected scenes and dependencies. So I'm pretty sure these two are just pretty much the same thing, I think. And then we also have export all resources in the project except resources checked below. So basically what this means is that anything that we have selected will not be exported. 
So if I was to select the Rusifix uh, models folder here, that means that none of the things in my Rusifix models folder would actually be exported because they're all checked now. So whether you find it easier to export your selected resources or export all the resources without the ones that you do select, um, you know, that all depends on what's going to be easier for you to do. And then we have exported export as dedicated server so I never use this option here because I've never had to export as a dedicated server before. If you guys want to look more into this option you totally can but uh you know I don't really know too much about this option so I'm not going to really talk about it that much. Just going to stick to what I know. So then we have these uh these filter things here so basically uh this determines if we want to export certain resources or not export certain resources into our project. So I guess the uh, the file types that you enter into this field here, for example, won't be exported into your project. The things you do enter here will be. Again, I don't usually make use of any of this stuff here. I just leave all this blank. But if you guys want to play around with it, you totally can. Again, though, I usually just leave this section here blank. And for most of my games too, I usually just select the export all resources in project. However, if there's a certain project I'm making that has like a demo and full game version, if I'm making like a demo version for that game, right, and yet it also contains files that are in the full game, I might just select the, you know, the export all resources in the project except resources checked below, and then I'll check the resources that are going to be in the full game, which I don't want to be in the demo, so then they're not exported with the, with the demo, you know what I mean? But yeah. So then we have patches. So here, if we select add pack, this basically allows us to add a PC PCK file, which includes, you know, extra content or bug fixes for our game, that sort of thing. So basically, patches is pretty self-explanatory, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think it's literally just, you know, adding in patch updates to your game. Now again, I've never made use of this option before. If you guys want to try and make use of it at some point, you totally can. Or if you want to do more research into it, you totally can. But I've never made up use of this option before because I've never had to. But if you guys want to, you totally can. Alright, so the next thing we have here is this Features tab. Now, this is something else which I don't ever make use of. If you guys want to do more research into this, you totally can. This is not really something that I know too much about. But basically, you can enter in some custom features here. That's pretty much all I know. So this feature list here, I think, are all the features that already do get exported with the game, if I'm correct. But uh, then you can add custom features if you want to as well. Um, I'll actually probably leave a link in the description below to uh, Godot docs that explain this better, in case you guys do want, you know, an explanation on how this works. And then last but not least, we have the encryption side of things. So basically, this just has to do with encryption of your project, so if you select Encrypt Imp Exported PCK, this will basically encrypt your PCK, I'm pretty sure. So I've never really made use of this option before, I've never really found myself having to. However, if you want to try this out, you totally can. Again, you guys can look more into this if you want to, I've never made use of the encryption option before. But if you guys do want to do more research into it, I'll leave links to Godot docs in the description below explaining anything that I may have not fully explained in this video. But yeah, so in conclusion for this video today, uh, I do make use of, you know, most of the options uh, stuff here in the options tab. Sometimes I'll make use of the resources tab here in case if, you know, there's certain resources I don't want to be exported into my project. However, when it comes to patches, features, and encryption, these are options that I usually never touch. They're not necessary to touch when exporting a game for Godot, nor is it even, you know, necessary to touch the resources tab at all. This is all just optional stuff here, so do keep that in mind. However, again, sometimes I do find the resources tab to be useful in case there is, of course, files which I don't want to be exported with my project. But the options tab here is where I usually, you know, change up most of what I need to, to export my project. Alrighty, so anyways, now that we're all ready to go, let's now go export our project. So if you are done messing around with your options here, you can now go export project, and then you can now export your project into your game folder. So if you want your build to be a debug build, you can select export with debug, or if you don't want it to be a debug build, you can uncheck this. I'm just going to uncheck it, and then we go save, and then now our build will export. So you'll know it's exporting because you'll have this uh, bar here basically saying packing, and this means that our game is now exporting. And then you'll know your game's been successfully exported when in your... Uh, debug console here, you will see the following text basically showing where your game has been exported to. 
Alrighty, so here we are in the folder for our game that we've exported. So as you can see, we have our console, we have our regular exe, and we also have our PCK file as well. So yeah, if you were to select the option where you embed the PCK, I'm pretty sure this PCK wouldn't exist, it would just be within the exe itself. And uh, if you choose to not export the console, then of course the console wouldn't appear here either. So anyways, let's now go open up our uh, example export here and see what happens. So as you can see, the game now launches. And fun fact, this isn't actually a game which we've got here. This is actually a animation which I made. It's a Godot animation. So you should see this release on my channel eventually whenever I do decide to finish it. I haven't worked on this animation in a while, but yeah. So anyways guys, that's pretty much the end of this video. That is how you export games in Godot. I wanted to go over as many options as possible, even some things which I don't really make use of too much, just to, you know, properly explain to you guys, uh, you know, certain features that you might want to make use of when exporting your games if you want to. But yes, yeah, so overall, exporting games in Godot is pretty easy. There are quite a bit of options, but as I explained whilst I was teaching you guys, um, there are a bunch of options which you don't even need to mess around with. You pretty much only really necessarily need to mess around with the, uh, the options on the options tab of the export menu. All the other stuff, like to do with the resources, the patches, the encryption, that sort of stuff. That stuff which can be ignored. But yeah, so anyways, see you all next time. Thank you all for watching once again. Hopefully this did help you out, and bye-bye.